There's many reasons why we left them out of the playoffs. Maybe next year they should try to not lose. Who's in? That is the question that we have all waited all season to find out. Five teams, just four spots. Who's staying home and who gets a chance to chase history? Let's find out. Although it seems we have two locks at the top with the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Penn State Nittany Lions based on their record conference championship and who they've beaten. You can then make an argument for the last three teams with Notre Dame not being in the conference, only losing one game. UCLA winning the Pac-12 championship with that dynamic offense, only losing one game with DTR. And then who can forget Virginia Tech just put the smackdown on Clemson 42 nothing in the ACC championship game. They made a huge statement in that win. Not only that, they now have the Heisman Trophy winner at running back. Some think that definitely will boost their chances. Hey, you know what? Let's see what our experts have to say about who's making it in to this year's playoff, all right? All right, we got Kirk Herbstreit here. We got Alabama, Penn State, Notre Dame, and UCLA. Okay, Kirk, leaving out Virginia Tech, who just put the smack down on Clemson. That's very interesting. You know what? Let's see what your colleague has to say. Let's see what Desmond Howard has to say on his playoff prediction. Pussy. <laughs> okay, okay. You're done. Get him out of here. He's a clown. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a deep dive into these teams and learn a little bit more about them, all right? Let's start this off with the UCLA Bruins, led by Chip Kelly and DTR. Dorian Thompson Robinson out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Bishop Gorman. This kid has got it all. He's got an arm. He's got the ability to, to extend plays with his legs. The absolute perfect fit in this offense. Not only do they have a Heisman Trophy candidate in Demetri Felton at running back, DTR has thrown 33 touchdowns and only five interceptions, just under 3,600 passing yards this season. Absolutely incredible. And a couple of their more notable wins are going to be against Utah and Cal. It beat Utah 33 to 10. It won the Pac-12 championship against Stanford 28-21. If they get in the playoffs, it's going to be electric to watch DTR and Chip Kelly. So that's the Pac-12. Let's make the jump to the East Coast and check out these Virginia Tech Hokies finishing the season at 12 and 1. Hendon Hooker. That's right. Hendon Hooker at quarterback, still at Vodtech on this roster. Thrown for just under 2,000 yards, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions. You know why? It is because they have the Heisman Trophy winner at running back, Khalil Herbert, who just rushed for under 2,000 yards for 26 touchdowns. Are you kidding me? Now, there's definitely some question marks on their defense. However, you know, two weeks ago, they gave up 70 points to Virginia, but last week against a top 10 Clemson Tiger team, they put the smack down on them 42 to nothing and and many believe that they had to make a statement to make the playoffs will it be enough we shall see all right moving on now we have a much more balanced team in the notre dame fighting irish who are still independent which could definitely still hurt them notre dame has a massive offensive line that was the, one of the first things that we saw and they're led by their running back Kyron Williams, who at one point was leading the Heisman race. Ian Book at quarterback has done an excellent job of just game managing. 28 touchdowns and eight interceptions, just under 3,000 yards passing this season. The thing is, Notre Dame's best win this season was BYU. 56 to 44 as notre dame has lost to oklahoma on september 28th the only other top 25 win is against michigan state 38 14 so not they're not in the conference and they don't have that many impressive wins so that will be going against them for sure but when you factor in that they are a more balanced team than the virginia tech Hokies and possibly even ucla that might that might account for something so we covered those three those are really the three that are in the conversation but well, let's go ahead and jump to the penn state nittany lions who have had a very very good season as they have top 25 wins against michigan state indiana michigan ohio state nebraska Northwestern. So Penn State has all of those top 25 wins with one of the best running backs in the country, Journey Brown. Jahan Dotson at wide receiver, an absolute dog. Sean Clifford finished the regular season 24 touchdowns and eight interceptions, throwing for over 3,000 yards. And they got some dogs on defense too. Definitely like Penn 
Garden State's chances here. And who can forget the number one team in the country for the majority of the season is the Alabama Crimson Tide. Not a whole lot needs to be said about this. They opened up the season with Texas A&M, beat them 42 to 30. They beat LSU. They ended the season by beating the number six Florida team at the time, number two, in a top, in a top 10 Auburn team. So they definitely have the wins. Matt Jones, Najee Harris, Devontae Smith. I mean, at Sertan, this team is loaded. But as you guys know in college football, any given day, and matchups are a huge thing. So you never know. I mean, Florida almost beat them until I choked. Just saying. All right. So you saw the predictions from our experts. We broke down the teams for you. Now is the time to find out who's in. Now on the show, on the show on ESPN, they have done this a couple of different ways. They have shown number four, five, six at the end, and they've also done the opposite. In my opinion, it would make more sense to go one through four and then just show five and six because we all know who like the, the top two teams are gonna be. So that way it, bu it builds a little bit more suspense. So let's go ahead and get this going. We are gonna start one through four and then show five and six. All right, the number one team in the country. We all kind of figure we know who it is, but let's find out. It's going to be the Alabama Crimson Tide. Congratulations to Nick Saban in the Tide as they clinch another number one spot in the college football playoff. All right, who's got that number two spot? It's going to be the Penn State Nittany Lions earning a much deserved playoff bid after all the top 25 wins that they have. All right, graphic guy, number three. Who is number three? Ah, the Virginia Tech Hokies. Look at that. So the committee definitely values their blowout win against a top 10 Clemson team. All right, you love to see it. So we are now left with UCLA and Notre Dame. Which team is going to get that final spot in this year's playoff? Here we go. The UCLA Bruins. Grabbing that final spot in this year's playoff. Then Notre Dame's at five, and then we got Florida at six. Wow. Now we are going to hear from the committee chair here in a moment because this is very interesting how we had three teams, two spots, and Notre Dame drew the short straw here. For like all of these teams, you can definitely make arguments either way. So I'm very interested to see what he had to say. Congratulations to Chip Kelly, DTR, and UCLA faithful as we have this year's playoff set, Alabama, Penn State, Virginia Tech, and UCLA. We have representatives from all around the country. And you love to see that. You know, we essentially have three teams fighting for two spots. So what was it? What were some of the things you guys were talking about that led to Notre Dame being left out of the playoffs? Obviously, they are a great team. But we looked at their strength of schedule and no conference championship as a major disadvantage compared to what the other teams have accomplished this season. All right, it looks like we are getting the bowl games loaded up here so we can run through those and show you guys all of these awesome matchups coming to the channel. We are gonna start off with the college football playoff first. In our first matchup in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, we got the 13-0 Alabama Crimson Tide going up against the number four team in the country, UCLA Bruins, 12-1. This one is going to be an absolute banger. And the, and the main reason why I say that is because you saw what Auburn did to Alabama. You saw Florida has to have success against Alabama. This Chip Kelly offense and DTR, they are no joke. Will Alabama be able to score at will? Probably. We should have a shootout on our hands, though. So UCLA, Alabama. Alabama set to kick off at 4 p.m. on New Year's Eve. All right. In the second college football playoff game that day, we have Penn State versus Virginia Tech. We got another game filled with dynamic offense. Virginia Tech is the number three points per game team in the country. Penn State is number nine. Statistically, Virginia Tech is beating Penn State in all these categories, like total offense. But when it comes to weapons, I... Penn State has a lot of weapons. Rather, it's Fryer Move, Parker Washington, Jahan Dotson, and on defense, Jesse Laqueta, and some dogs in their secondary. And on Virginia Tech side, you got Hendon Hooker and the Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, this one is going to be one hell of a game as well in the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. So those are the two college football playoff bowl games 
let's go ahead and jump into some of the other bowl games, including the bowl match that the year Memphis Tigers are going to be in. Here we go. The number five and number six team in the country, Notre Dame versus Florida in the All-State Sugar Bowl. Both teams not happy with how the season ended, and they are looking to make a statement. In this year's Rose Bowl game, we got Northwestern 10 and 3 against Oregon 7 and 5. Pac-12 really representing out there. I don't understand how they lost five games. I used Oregon in one of the games this year, and they were unbelievable. All right, in this year's Citrus Bowl, we got Auburn versus Miami 10 and 2. I mean, both teams are 10 and 2. That's going to be an awesome game. Tampa Bay Outback Bowl, Iowa 8 and 4. Ole Miss. This is very interesting because of the two completely different styles of play. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, your Memphis Tigers are going to be getting a rematch against the Ohio State University in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Our one loss this season came at the hands of Ohio State in the shoe. We are going to get the opportunity to play them again. We are a completely different team from when we played them last time. I know the boys back home are buzzing about this matchup here. So now you know who's going to be in this year's playoff. It's always fun being able to do these playoff selection shows and then jump into the games as well. So this season, we are going to continue to do the spin wheel thing. The lower seed in the playoff will get a little bit of a higher probability of me selecting them to use her. Now, next season, we might mess around with some more things. Like people are telling me to, to just sim the game, but like that that's content that I could bring to the channel. Why would I sim it if we can like turn it into some kind of content? Like that doesn't make any sense. Who knows, maybe next season we'll switch and I'll play offense for both teams or, or something like that. We'll figure it out. Anyways, the playoffs are set. The Memphis Tigers have their opponent set. I'm so excited to bring you guys this content. College football is what we do around here. Number one channel for college football gaming. I appreciate you guys checking this out and I'll have these uploaded as soon as I can. Until then, I'll catch you guys later.